up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Triple, Triple P, P and J. J. Woo! You can do the applause. Fuck. Damn. I... You don't give me no reaction time. So. Uh, anywho, so <laughs> if y'all are new to the YouTube channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell button so you can see when we post new episodes, new shorts, new highlights, new whatever on the audio platforms. Download the episode and make sure you just give us a rating or something. All of that stuff helps. Um, so, as y'all can tell by the opening, Kayla, Kayla K., We'll talk about this in the next episode, too. But Kayla Kay, she is finally an official cast member at Triple P&J. Hello. Welcome, my girl Kayla, on the show. You already know she's done been here. She was here for the whole reunion. She did the cards and everything, so... And she's been here for episode, for a bunch of episodes. A bunch of episodes. When I, went, was, when I went back to make the opening, the new opening credits, I was like, damn. I said, she's been on a lot of damn episodes. Because she was like in almost every damn clip. But yeah, major shout out to Kayla. Um, her and Jaleesa couldn't make it tonight, but we will see them on the next episode. Yep. The wheels keep wheeling. So, Dan the man. <clears throat> Kurt. Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kurt Kurt, but okay. okay. Kurt Kurt. So, what's going on with you? How you been? I've been good. How was your day today? Long. Long. For and, real? Yeah. Mm. What happened? A lot. A lot. What is it? I, I don't want to, I don't know if I should put all that out there. You could talk about it in code. Oh, um, well, folk don't be listening. Mm, and then, slow. Yeah, you know, y'all ever y'all ever had um, <laughs> y'all been to school and you've had a lunch plate, you know what I'm saying? And like they're like, all right, what's on the, today's menu? And then you're sitting there like, I don't know what the fuck they about to say. And it's sloppy joes. You got tater tots and catch ketchup and all that other stuff. It's catsup. Catsup. That's what that's what yeah. they used to say on our lunch menu. Catsup. Yeah. I guess because we were wampus cats, maybe I don't know. But um, yeah, but sometimes them little sloppy Joe sandwiches be put together sloppy as fuck and messed up. The bun be over here, the meat be over there, and another bun ain't even in sight. You don't even know where the bitch went. You might have found it. You you might actually have the top bun, but it's got like a little chunk missing from it. I'm not a big fan of Sloppy Joes. They just get my hands all dirty and shit, and mm, I don't know. They just don't really sit well with me. But anywho, that's another story for another day. In, so, in words of Curtis, that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there, and I don't give a fuck about it right now. <laughs> but um, as y'all can tell by the title of this episode, uh 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 uh-uh. oh. uh-uh. how was your day? I prefer not to say. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's the bullshit. I'm just playing. So, my day was good. Um, I went out of town last night or yesterday, and I ended up staying there last night. So, this morning was pretty much just like eating breakfast, gassing up, and then coming back. But I had a good time where yes. I went. And, um, yeah, I've been, I got home. I started cleaning up because, you know, that's what we, that's what clean people do on the weekends when they're off. And um and yeah, I took an I took a good ass nap. And then I got woken up by um a friend of mine asking me a question and Damn and um them fucking friends every time. <laughs> and then I woke up and I've been up ever since and here I am on the podcast. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate your main character energy popping up and actually being here for once. So all right, so anyway, so we're going to do the questions. <laughs> Pause. So, we're on episode, what, 103? I've been on all of them. So, for once. Y'all know that the Taco Bell app, you can get points? So, anywho, um, as y'all can tell by the title of today's episode, um, we're going to be talking about uh, Krishan. We didn't talk about her a couple of times on the show. We were going to talk about a different topic, but we changed our mind. She keep popping up. uh She keep popping up. So, you know, she recently just got out of prison. I don't remember what she was in prison for, but her and Blueface, they had their son. 
and then both of them end up going to prison after the son was born. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember how long she was there. If somebody knows if they're a big Christian fan, drop down in the comments and let us know. But anyway, um, she just got out of prison, or not too long ago got out of prison. Um, and I saw on Instagram today or yesterday that um, she recently got baptized. And I read her caption and, you know, was giving her life to the Lord again. And um, I guess trying to change her ways, which I applaud anybody that's trying to do that. I mean, I got baptized when I was 13. Um, honestly, I feel like I probably need to get baptized again because 13, and so I did it on my own accord. My parents didn't force me to do it or anything. I had said that I wanted to get baptized and it was one of those things at that age where I thought I was going to get dipped into this water and then I... Every, my whole life was going to change, which, of course, it didn't. So I feel like with her, I don't know. I feel like getting baptized, my personal opinion, getting baptized builds your relationship with God. I don't feel like getting baptized changes who you are because we are who we are at our core. Now, you can change some of your qualities and features and stuff, but me personally, I don't really feel like she's going to change that much. I mean, I hope she does, but for the sake of their kid. But how do you feel? Do you feel like when somebody gets baptized that that changes them as a whole individual? Or what's your intake on getting baptized? Or for other religions, what y'all do? Well, to, to speak about that specifically outside of any other religion, like, I mean... Me personally, I don't think it's going to change you as an entire person, but I think it does it does change your mindset in in that immediate moment to where you're like, okay, well, I, I can only speak on my experience because right. yes, I was baptized uh, young and um I, to me specifically, like my um I think I was kind of not really encouraged, but I encouraged myself to do it because my grandma was there and she was staying with us for a little while and then my dad was there and um i just it's just something in my heart just touched me to the point where i was like you know i i do want to i do want to move myself in a, in a different direction so i'm not going to say it's going to change me as a whole but i think that that one step is like a butterfly effect and it changes the path that you might have went on versus if you didn't so it, it, it's right yeah i'm not going to say it's like life changing but you know it can make a difference in the long run yeah and i'm me personally i'm not a big christian fan but when people are trying to better themselves i support it so if it's not like something for social media because you know how some of these celebrities be if it's not like something for social media and you really are trying to better yourself for yourself and like a publicity yeah thing. if you're trying to really better yourself for your child and just yourself in general um I applaud you for that. Um, can we get some claps? Yeah, absolutely. And and people definitely can change. People can change. Just because you're one way one day doesn't mean that you're subjected to whatever you've done in the past. You know, people grow and they can advocate against things that they've done in the past. Yes, we are. Yes, I have done that multiple times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, shout out to you, Krishan Rock, for... Um, getting baptized again and, you know, changing your ways. Um, but <laughs> when Blueface get out of prison, don't resort back. Just stay stay on your straight and arrow. Stay where you at. Please. Because that relationship, clearly from what was played out on social media and on the TV screen, it ain't for y'all. Just y'all had a kid together. Leave it at that. Yeah. Absolutely, because I think at that point, once you had to, once you've had your, your child, and you done been through the, the lows, you know, what I'm saying don't get lower, just just take it for what it was and, and push forward. So you know, just me speaking personally. So yeah, yeah. What's the um? Okay, so moving on from Krishan, um, we have <laughs> we have some questions, our random questions to ask each other. Um, what's the questions you have? Hoo wee okay. We, so, we got a few for each other. Yeah, so we about to we about to get the dig off into the roommate diaries. We're not roommates, but we're brothers, so they came off the shade room. Yeah. So y'all already know. Um 
But yeah, so uh, what's what's something in your house that tells you that a person is wealthy? What's something in their house? In their house. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah, let's just say like okay, this this is either like a friend that you've been around for a while and they just happen to take you to their home. Never really talked about their like financial status like that, but you went over there and you're like okay, and you peep something you're like. Maybe not they got, to say maybe you count, got some money. Yeah, now you're not pocket counting, but you can tell that by this, this does give them some type of financial status. Um, that's a good question because none of my fr- all my friends are poor. Um, <laughs> come on back. Oh, I forgot. I'm on the clock. Yeah, you clock the fucking... <laughs> I clock the fucking... You on payroll right now. Okay, well... Insubordination. <laughs> Job abandonment. I'm trying to get paid, so I'm not poor. <laughs> so, um, So, I feel like, for me... <laughs> you know, for me... <laughs> if Don't worry, guys. I got y'all back out there. I know y'all... I'm, y'all gonna watch this and be like... I said what I said. <laughs> um, but anyway, I don't know a specific item or something that they have in their house that will make me think that they're wealthy. Wealthy does not mean rich all the time. Um, and rich don't mean you have money either. You can be rich on life. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Me personally, I kind of like to look at people's layout of their house and like their furniture they have and a big thing is how many TVs you got because why you got so many damn TVs um <laughs> why you got so many TVs you just got money to blow I guess or you wait we waited for Black Friday maybe <laughs> um, them deals be hidden they do but I don't know I would say the furniture and I would also say, like, how many rooms they have. Because, you know, some people, I have met one individual, they had, like, five rooms in their in their home, and they were well off. And one of the rooms was, like, a mini theater. So, I think stuff like that would spark, like, okay, this person might have some money. I need to be friends with this person and see how I could come up. But... But yeah, I think that. Um, what about you? What would stand out for you and make you think that somebody would wealthy? Well, l- let me let me define what I feel like is wealth versus like outside of a financial status. I think wealth is your abundance and happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, like that's what I feel like is wealthy because people want to be happy at the end of the day and finances translates to happiness i don't care what they say money money doesn't buy it yes the fuck it does but anyways um i i feel that when people have like um things in their house that represents what kind of circle they have you know whether that's like family or friends or stuff like that like where they're like putting out pictures of family members and they're putting out Things that like that were gifted to them by uh, friends and stuff like that. That's just it feels very wholesome to me, and I think like when I come into somebody's home and I see like just um, you ever see these like super nice houses on on like with the social media where they're just like big, but it just doesn't look like nobody lives there. Yes, like it's nice, but it just doesn't feel like wealth to me. It just feels like you just you just got a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. Like wealth to me, like yeah, you know, you you got a big space, but at the same time, it's like it's filled with with some type of love and character, and that's what I feel um, comes off as like a person's wealthy. You know, when somebody's living in a spot and it's just dirty, you know, they got you know whatever, just a bunch of stuff laying around. You know, maybe it, it signs of like alcoholism or you know stuff like that it just doesn't give me wealthy like that's just like okay well you just living at this point you know not trying to judge nobody's living situations really but to me if i'm gonna come in there and i'm gonna be like um impressed by mm-hmm. something that's what i would see i'm like man they got they got this they got 
family member stuff. They got stuff from like whenever they went on vacation. You know, things like that. It's just, yeah. it's just interesting. I'm really impressed by cleanliness and, like you said, like what they have on their walls, what type of paintings or family portraits, um, the type of couch you got. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Their> couches. <laughs> he said couches earlier. Okay, so well, guys, make sure you got some good couches. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you know, some couches are comfortable. <laughs> Or clean, or clean, because if I can't, there's there's not too many places a guest can be at, but your couch, and if your couch ain't right, then I, I get it, yeah. I will say, and not to brag on myself too much, which I am going to anyway, I will say almost all of my friends that have come over to my house have said that my house is really comfortable. Like, these, these people be... These I changed I changed the I word. Heard it, I heard it. These people be taking off their shoes and everything and just <laughs> comfortable and shit. just get comfortable. And <laughs> never kind of kick back. Right. Both of my so dog. both of my couches each seat reclines. So yeah, it's it's real it's real comfortable. Mm -hmm. But it's just the fact like people who have only been here one time, like their first time, they come over here and you, you know he didn't get them couches off of Shein. Them couches is plush. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, mine are well put together <laughs> and heavy. But um, but no, it's just like they'll come over and the very first time they come over, I started looking in. I'm an observer. Like when you start doing like hand movements and shit, if you notice, my eyes will pivot towards your hand. Like I got to make sure you ain't coming towards me. So that's the same with people taking off their shoes. So people start taking off their shoes. I'm instantly looking like, the fuck are you doing? But I respect that. Like, okay, I respect the fact that you think my house is comfortable enough for you to treat it like your home. There was one friend individually, or there was one friend that we had or have that just went through my damn cabinets. And I, t I I told her it was Kim. I told her <laughs> I was like, okay, Kim, yeah. <laughs> Come on, round of applause. I told her I was like, she was just going through the cabinets and oh, what's this? I said, damn, okay, you just made yourself at home. Like, I didn't think that that was like snacks. Yes, yeah, she was. She was. She was, she was looking for snacks. Um, <laughs> That's well. It was one of those nights. You know, you got some wealth and you got. But snacks. I didn't have none then, so we had to go get some tacos. But anyway, <laughs> okay. but um, but yeah, I applaud myself on that. And then your house is really nice too. So, yeah. I think we all got some well put together homes. Mm -hmm. So you know, I I like it. But yeah, I try to individualize each room, which I think you do the same thing. You know, the the podcast room, your um. Your um, audition I guess, slash yeah, office, office room. Yeah, that's how I was looking for the audition room. You got your living room set the way you want it. Your kitchen is just it's very homey feeling. You know, you don't really your your room is your room is your room is you know you got to keep it private, which I respect. You know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I like it. Y'all didn't respect it when y'all came up in there trying to get me out the bed. It was your party. You were drunk. We were trying it to was do it with your cheers. birthday party. That you had at your house. But it was your party, so correct yourself. Right, so thank you. But at your party, that was for me. Okay. I can't surprise my damn self. But anyways, it was a great time, <laughs> and we all went into his room, and we did cheers, because you know me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to get up, because yeah. I was past the fuck his out. His ass was slumped the fuck over on the damn bed, and I'm sitting there trying to hand him a shot. <laughs> Hands just out. I took the shot, though. He did. He did do that. So, mm -hmm. respect. That's why I was laid out to begin with. Yeah, it, we're your friends. We do shit like that. Yeah, I know. But, anywho, so the next question is for you. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> as a child. <laughs> great what, question, Nick. What was funny about that? It was great. What it was, was funny so, about it that? It was a good question. So, anyway, so as a child, what superstition did you grow up on that you realize is now dumb as fuck? Because I have one, too. So, there was there was a couple. Everybody has the superstition, like, not everybody, but, like, people who know. Breaking the mirrors, you get bad luck for X amount of years. Crossing under a ladder in front of a black cat. Me, outside of the, the black cat, now my grandma, she is very, like, 
superstitious because you know she's very Christian. Mm-hmm. She's very superstitious when it comes to that. She literally made us. We were coming down the only street that way that we can get to my road to get to my house. Right. And there was a black cat across the street, and she made us stop the vehicle. She's like, baby, no, 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 no. That's bad luck. And we had to wait for the cat to move and then turn around and go somewhere else. And cats move slow. Yeah. When they want to. So long story short, we had to make a whole detour to get back to the house because of the black cat. But... The the main one for me is when I was a kid, I'll never forget, I was it was one of the late nights as a kid. I was in the street with a bunch of my friends. It was dark, the lights was on from the street, you know, on dang well, we should have been in the house. And um a superstition was you, you know them June bugs? Mm-hmm. So the June bugs would like uh it was a superstition that at your twenty fifth birthday have somehow, some way a June bug would like if you, I forgot what the stipulation was. Like, if you did something bad, like a June bug, we'll get I don't think I've here. heard this one before. Yeah, well, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's mine. So, let me finish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, basically, like, the, it was, if you did something bad, and on your 25th birthday, a June bug would, like, magically crawl in your ear and eat your brains, and you would die. Mm. That's so, what's wrong. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, continue. So, that was it. I ain't had nothing else to say. So, yeah, you would literally, like, I, when I was, t- when I was, before I turned 25, I was always worrying about that. But I wasn't here. I was in Colorado at the time. So I was like, oh, I'm good. I'm safe. There's no June bugs over here. Then I came back to Louisiana when I, when I was around my 25th birthday. And you was looking around for June bugs? I, I ain't gonna lie. Some nights I would actually put shit in my ears. Just to make sure. I don't know what it was. It was just, a, it, I was too damn old. To be believing some shit like that, but for some reason I was like, "What if it really does happen?" Because them they be in it. Yeah, the, well, it, the could, wall it didn't happen, I guess. I'm here now, 29, yeah. 29 years young. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks for asking. So mine was. Um, <laughs> it sounds so stupid now. But anyways, you can you can continue. Yeah, anyway, I was going to. Mm-hmm. Mine is um the whole you step on a crack, you break your mom's back. back. <laughs> like, I, I'm I can't tell you how many times I look so stupid walking outside <laughs> tiptoeing and high stepping and making sure I didn't step on a crack because I didn't want my mom's back broke. But <laughs> but one day I just decided, I'm about, I think she made me mad or something. God rest her soul. But I think she made me mad uh, one day. And I was like, I'm about to step on this damn crack. And I stepped on it and I got home and her back wasn't broke. And I was like, oh, okay. So that was a lie. So we good. It was that. It was the um, candy man. Ooh, the Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, all the damn. Oh, my God. I'll never forget when I was, in, uh, when I was uh, young. Living in Texas, we used to go to the youth center, and um, it was kind of one of those weird ages that was like where I went to this youth center. It was nice. It was fun. There was always a bunch of stuff to do. They had like a whole little computer section where we can rent out like you know the, the CD games and stuff like that. I used to play Sonic all the time, and there was a bunch of kids that were always there, so they knew the people that worked there. And I felt like I didn't have access to certain places, but there was the bathrooms, and. In the bathrooms, like, the kids would just go in there, and they would always be messing around. And then one day, there was just, like, this whole story about, or the myth or whatever, um, that they said the Bloody Mary thing. And whenever they they did it, and then they turned the lights on, there was blood, like, smears all over the mirror. Now, can I confirm the story? No, because I wasn't there, but that was just, like, the big the big story amongst all the kids. Now, I've done this shit a few times because I wanted to see what happened. I ain't gonna lie to I'm I'm a pussy when it comes to that. I've done it before. Mm -hmm. Um, I moved real slow and said the bitch name real slow. But, um, yeah, nothing happened. Maybe I was... Yet. Maybe... Yet. That was years ago. Yet. Maybe I was just in the right place at the right time. So, I don't know. If it happened, it happened. 
That's my karma, I guess. She coming. It take time for her. She might be pending. Why didn't it take time for them, though? Pending. Why didn't it take time for them? Why did it happen instantly? I don't know. The bitch probably on different time schedules. You know, she probably ain't clocked in. Okay, well, that was 20 years ago, so she need to come on if she coming. Mm. What's the next question? Stay the fuck away from the mirror. God dang. Get baptized. How are you doing too much? <laughs> so, the, the next question for you, Mr. Johnson, is, as you get older, what irritates you more than anything? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> I be irritated as fuck. <laughs> if you know me, you know. Um, I'll give you three. So, I didn't think I asked for all that. Well, you didn't give a number or anything. You just said, what irritates me? Yeah, I didn't say what's, like, multiple. Anyway, so the top three. Number one, hygiene. If I can smell you, you can smell you. Fix that shit. Um, Poor work ethic. That's number two. And woe is me, adults. So I just feel like we all have a sad story. We do. We all have a sad story, and I just feel like some people use that to their advantage to get pity and sympathy and all of that other shit. And I just feel like they use that ties back into being lazy. They use that to be lazy, and it pisses me off. It irritates the hell out of me. Because if my sad stories motivates me... I know everybody's reacting di- reacts different to trauma and shit, but I just really feel like I get irritated by it. Yeah, they use it as like a crutch. Yeah, like how okay. How long are you gonna use it as a crutch? Go to therapy or something. It, it's okay. It is okay. Therapy is is there for a reason. It's there for grown adults to be able to level themselves out. Now I will say, death, death is something different because you don't ever I don't care how long it's been. You don't ever get over that. And those y'all that are watching, if y'all been through a close death, you know, you don't ever get over that. You just learn how to cope with it. But I'm I'm referring to, like, relationship trauma and stuff. Like, get over it. It was 20 years ago. Yes, your ex cheated on you. You don't have to side-eye everybody that comes to you. It's okay to give people a chance. And just because... Your ex cheated on you does not give you the right to act shitty towards everybody else. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate that because some people need to hear that. What is your thing that irritates you or things that irritate you at the older you get? People! Just people in general? That, no, I was getting there. Let me finish my song. Oh, okay. That don't drink water. Mm. Y'all, some that go with hygiene. y'all some motherfucking audacity to ask people to be out here telling people that you don't like to drink water. That shit's crazy to me. Water it tastes so good to me. It, 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 I don't give a damn if it does t- or doesn't taste good. 90 some 80, a high percentage of your body is consistent of water. And for you to not be out here drinking it, to replenish your body, that ties into what you say. Is like they smell, people just be smelling your breath, the things that you, the, just your body. That's why y'all got gland issues. But right, tonsils, stones, and all that other nasty ass shit. Cause you don't, y'all be eating all this nasty ass shit. You don't eat right. You don't drink no fucking water, and it just makes everything else go down the hill. So like your skin get all nasty. You have a bunch of acne and shit. Uh, your fucking breath stink, you stink, your family stink. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All y'all stink, okay? It is, I'm so for real. Everything around you just be stinking. So, let's let's clear that up. As a grown adult, anybody past the age of 18, you need to be drinking water. Under 18, everybody needs to drink water. You need water. I can't speak for children. Children are children. I mean, children are children, but your parents need to tell you to drink water. Thank you. Them Capri Suns ain't gonna do it. Right. Y'all be blowing back these damn um, Sprites and 
sodas and, and, and all this other shit, and then y'all be out here buying these fucking water cases when the fucking hurricane hit. You don't even drink the shit. And, I mean, us as adults, we drink alcohol. So, yeah, we got to drink water. I like it's water. water yeah, there's water in mine, too. But that's why I'm activated. I'm very replenished. Right. But, um, yeah, water, first of all, it hydrates you. Um, but I, I don't know. I just feel like chugging a bottle of water, is it's amazing to me. Right. Replenishing. Very stimulating in, in the fact of you feel better. It fixes a lot of issues. <laughs> it's a stale face. Daniel, all right. So, no, wait, wait, hold on. I'm not done. I oh, got okay. more since you had three. Okay. <laughs> well, mine was, I did mine very quick, but go ahead. I feel like that one needed to be like. All right, go ahead. Very express. The, yeah, because, yeah, we talked about it a few times on the show already, <laughs> but y'all, non-water drinking bitches, change it. People, um. If your piss is always yellow, you need water. Oof. Yeah, you might want to go see a damn doctor. Um, loud ass folk. People who are just excessively loud <laughs> irritate the fuck out of me. It and it really does depend on the time of the day. It's either too early or too late, mm-hmm. and you just you just are too fucking loud. Like I get it. Some people are excited. They're just they're great. They're they're just happy to be alive. But sometimes, bro, pipe the fuck down because. You out here at 7 o'clock in the morning talking about <laughs> Grand Rising Kings, <laughs> Queens, let's turn out. No, sh- no, fuck no, bro. Like, Good morning, it's, my beautiful people. people. <laughs> yeah, no, mm-mm, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> Y'all out here talking about some, a bunch of shit at 8 o'clock in the morning that we ain't hyped about, but you ain't even like that in real life. But anyways, so let's, let's. And we know. It's 2024. Let's. Relax. Let's realize that the morning times are the morning times. Get up, feel good, give out positive energy, but don't be fucking extra. It's too much for me. Put down the drugs early in the morning. Right, them pills and whatever the fuck else you be on. But anyways, so y'all know what the hell it is. Let your body wake up before you get caffeinated. Please. Right, with with some water. But yeah, that's that's one of the things. Water and a toothbrush. (laughs) <laughs> and a shower. Throw that sprinkle that in there. Yeah. Them showers go a long way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, was that y'all it? water bills don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's really it. I probably got like twenty five of the things that I can talk I about. I have a bunch of other shit too, but we I'm only got so much down. time. Yeah, I'm gonna narrow it down. Um, so <laughs> in your phone, what is some of the name <laughs> what is some of the names of the group chats? <laughs> That you have in your phone. <laughs> there is one in particular that stands out to me the most. Ooh wee. So I, I start first and foremost. I have the uh, uh, the mind uh, mind family, which is like you know mine uh, is like close to my eye in German. So that's like me, my um, and, and some of my my close family. We're in there, and, you know, we just stay up to date. Everybody sends pictures, or, you know, we just chop it up as a family member. Um, so we're not texting each other individually, even though we do have our individual chats. Um, the next one on the list would be um, the ball head ho shit. The ball head of ho shit. Ball head of ho shit. Yeah. Ball head of ho shit. Yeah. Bye okay. and shit. So yeah, anyways, um <laughs> the back yes <laughs> This is my people. Uh they know what the fuck it is. Um I got the the No shit. I don't I don't <laughs> <laughs> I ain't wanna say it. <laughs> I was waiting on it. <laughs> I don't even know shit. There's that one. Them's them's who my close people. <laughs> the ones that I talk to on a daily basis, <laughs> the shit be going on in that bitch is funny. <laughs> shit. Um, then we do have some extra chats that, like, whenever we're doing like holiday events and stuff like that, we'll we'll throw them some out there. Um, <laughs> ooh wee. It just depends. They range from Snapchat to mm-hmm. uh, to my text messages chats and shit like that. So, got the I, Triple P and J podcast chat. Yeah, I 
Shit. All those same chats. So, I have the Triple P and J. I have the no shit. No shit. No I have that chat. I have bald head ho shit. I don't really talk in that one that much anymore, but I had that one. Um, and then, there's a couple that's not named, but what's understood don't gotta be explained. Um, who's in the chat, you just know what it is. And then, like he said, there's a couple of chats that I'm in, like, for different events and stuff like that. And then, the work phone. Mm. I got a chat for everything, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, we pretty much got the same chats. What's the next question? I I can go down my list of all the chats that we've created. Over the years? Yeah, the birthday shenanigans, Lisa's surprise party, the birthday kickbacks, the shut the fuck up and don't say shit, the dipping and sipping, always on vacation and turn yep. up crew, the pool party, bash palooza, the final peace out pass. And it's so funny. Which way is north? I got so much shit. It's so funny because a lot of those people in those chats we do not talk to anymore at all. Mm-mm. Those was the old ones. Those remember? were the those were the good days. Yeah, more pain, more gain. You remember that one? Yeah, I feel like I'm in all of those, mm-hmm. or I was in all of those. There yeah. was a few I left, but I'm nothing wrong with that. Yeah, some of those chats I had to leave because I started to fall out with some of the people in it, and it just wasn't the place to be anymore. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, so yeah, let us know what some of the chats that y'all got in y'all's um, text messages, snaps, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the chat. You never know. We might think you know, funny. if some of those group chats, especially no shit, if some of those group chats got leaked, I would just be like, line it up. Immediately. I said what I say, line it up. <laughs> Yo. And yeah, I was talking about you. Yo. Well, talk about the lineup. So what happens um, if a person was to say, uh, you know, like, what, what's, a, what's a good response to someone that says, I miss you, and you don't miss them back? You know, the old lineup. Aww. That's it. Yeah, if I don't miss you back, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be like, um, I feel like if I said, aww. Uh, that's nice. Um, it would be mean. So my response, and I have done this before, to people that said that they missed me, I said, oh, okay. And then I just changed the subject. What about you? Because I feel like you'd be lying back. All right, kids. Y'all sit down now. Uncle Daniel about to tell y'all something. I don't know. I don't know what a good response is, to be honest with you. Oh. Uh, huh, yeah, kind of like that. I mean, there's been people that really say, like, oh, I miss you or something like that, and I just don't know what to say, so I just kind of leave my red. That's the best response. Oh, so nothing. Yeah, I look for real. You just, you just, I look at it, I might, re- I, the best that I might react do is react to it sometimes. Now, there are some people that I, I like, feel like, I might have not liked it a certain time, but then the shit's changed, so I'm like, okay, yeah, it's cool, yeah, I, I missed you a little bit, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, the main response is awe if I don't miss them, really, but <laughs> um, like you said, react to it, like, I love the message, but there was a blast from the past, actually, today that hit me up and um, told me that they were moving back to Louisiana, and I really didn't have that much of a response because I don't talk to them. Mm. So they were one of those individuals that somehow I got deleted off their Snapchat and their Snapchat is public, right? So they popped up in the subscriptions part. Like I subscribed to them like I'm a fan. So we're moved. I removed them back. <laughs> so damn. So today when, the, when today when the person was texting me, um they said I miss hanging out with the group. And I was like, for real? I say, in my personal opinion, I feel like you only hung out with the group like once or twice or maybe three times. I was like, so you miss it for what? I mean, we don't even talk like that. So then (laughs) I'll tell you off camera. But but then um, after that, they had said something else. And I was like, oh, I said, well, I removed you off of Snapchat because I got on it one day and 
it said that I was subscribed to you and I'm not a fan of you, so I removed you back. So Yeah, I recently learned that too. Like whenever you Yeah, like, I you told were, you. Yeah. I, yes. It's, <laughs> so like whenever you are following somebody and they're following you or they're you're friends with each other and they don't they're not friends with you. you they delete you. Yeah, you can't see their Snapchat score and stuff like that no yeah. more. Yeah. I was very shocked. I was like, I looked at something that I looked uh, I was like, damn. All of a sudden, you don't fuck with me no more? So, like, okay, cool. so then, while I'm texting this person and telling them that, I get a Snapchat request. So then, my response back to something that they, they said, something like, well, I don't even know um, what would have made me do that. And I said, yeah, me either, because I barely even talked to you. So I don't know. So then I was like, well, I'm going to let the request sit there until I feel like accepting it again mm. and leave it at that. Yeah. Well, talking about putting people on pause, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Um, I need to do a couple things. So, Well, anyways, welcome back. Y'all already know we are uh, getting back into the questions. We didn't even go nowhere. <laughs> getting back into the questions. All right. So, was this going to be the last question? Yeah, we're about to wrap this up. Uh, we're going to put in one more question. Is my turn? It's my turn. Asked? It's my turn. You asked the last one. Oh, okay. So, my last question mm. is, <clears throat> and this is for the audience, too, so y'all leave a comment because this one is kind of deep. Um, how do you forgive someone that you feel resentment towards? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's why it's last. <laughs> that really is a tough one. Um, it's it just depends on what the resentment was, to be honest with you, because you know my situation, and I don't have like resentment towards a lot of people. Um, I'm either really not gonna fucking fuck with you and don't give a fuck about what kind of apology you have, or I will try to overcome it and like be like cordial and like hey look it is what it is but I mean I'm gonna be honest with you I don't I'm not gonna act like I fuck with you or I like you it's just I'm having a hard time explaining this so I just go based off of like my, my past situations and you know if y'all been on the, any of the previous episodes we kind of talked about some of this stuff but um, I had my ex hit me back up and try to tell me one time she had called me up at like some fucking two three in the morning talking about hey um I, I didn't pick up the phone because she called me through Facebook Messenger, and I was like, what are you calling me for this early in the damn morning? And she wanted to tell me something about, like, oh, I forgive you, and da 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 And I resent this person a lot. And um, I, I read what you was about to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go person. ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so they were telling me, I basically, I was like, I don't care what you forgive. I don't give a fuck. Really, I was just... To be honest with you, I don't need you to forgive me. I forgive myself, but at the same time, it's like I apologize to myself for putting me through that because if I didn't allow it, it wouldn't have even gotten to that point. So that type of resentment, um, I don't really forgive. I don't really, I don't know. To be honest, my, my honest answer, I really don't forgive people. Once you've, like, because I'm a very nice person, I'm very, 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 very forgiving, but once you cross a certain threshold with me, there's just no coming back yeah. at all. Because I'm too nice, I'm too, I'm not going to say I'm a pushover, but I'm too forgiving to a fact of, like, I know a lot of people out there would not fuck with that at all, and I'm just, you know, I'm chill. But if you push me to the edge, to the point where I really don't like you, then fuck you to the fullest. And I mean that for the rest of my life, until I have a charge of heart, who knows. But until then, there's like maybe two females out there, fuck you. Fuck the first one and fuck the other one. Fuck both y'all, for real. So, if you know who you are, you know who you are. Because I've seen you around, you know what the fuck the game is, bitch. So, mm. yeah. But, yeah. Mm. So, so yeah. Not really much forgiveness going on. So, that's, this is a tough question. Yeah, what about you? It's a, <laughs> it's a tough question. So, I feel like... I feel like 
It all depends on the situation. The glasses came off. But I will say I'm a little bit more, a lot of bit more blunt than you. And I will say what's on my mind. That's no secret. Team Taurus. I'm stubborn as fuck. Um, and I just say it like it is. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. So I feel like I'm a real genuine person. Maybe everybody don't feel like that, but I don't give a fuck. Um, I feel like I'm a real genuine person to where I'm going to be honest with you about how I feel about certain situations, how I feel about you. And I feel like if I don't receive that back, it's kind of hard for me to move on. Um, especially if I didn't do anything to you or if you know I didn't do something malicious but it offended you and you go out of your way to make people think I'm a bad person because I'm real forgiving. I help anybody or not anybody. I'll help majority I help majority of people, especially people I fuck with heavy. I will help everybody if I can. Even if I don't got it, I'm still helping people. You will never know I don't have it because I'm still helping you. Um, and I just feel like once once that line, like you said, is crossed, it's kind of hard for me to move on from that because it's kind of like, why would you do that? Why would you put me in this situation now where I got to be the bad guy and then you about to play the victim? So... Yeah. Why would you put me in the situation to be this bad character I'm about to have to be and then you play the victim and then you run around and tell everybody your side of the story. Everybody say that shit of I'm just telling my truth. No bitch. It's a lie. I don't give a fuck. It's not your truth. It's a lie. It's only one truth. So People say, My side, your side, the truth. Yeah, and your side is bullshit. So, I just feel like... I do forgive people. I will say that. I feel like I'm really forgiving. I have gave people chances that I should have cut off years ago. Um, but what I will say is... I'm, where I, whereas I think I forgave them... When that situation's brought back up... It's kind of like, dang, maybe I didn't completely get over this because why am I still mad about this? And I know, you know, I'm still going to forever feel how I feel about certain situations, but that shouldn't still trigger me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Maybe I don't forgive people either. On the outside, I do. On the inside, I still don't like you. But um, you'll know. You will know if I don't like you. I'm not going to. I'm an actor, but... In my real life, I'm not that good of an actor because I feel like I could be around certain people that's done me wrong and be cordial around, but mm -mm, it just it just don't work like that for me, especially when I didn't have anything but good intentions for you. So yeah, we could talk, we could chop it up. It it will never go anywhere. Yeah, that's that's why I be standing on business when it comes to to people that I don't genuinely like because just like you said like you really must have done something wrong because we're the type of people that just like you genuinely try to do stuff out of the kindness of your heart and people just take that shit for advantage to a, like an extensive point where it's like damn like you you fucking up fucking up and I just yeah you definitely just don't fuck with them anymore yeah I've had a lot of situations um where you think somebody fucks with you like you fuck with them, but then it turns out they don't. Or they're asked, you know, certain questions. And, you know, look, if, if I'm a friend, we've all fucked up before, but if I'm a friend, your deepest secrets and shit is always safe with me. Like... We we have spats back and forth or whatever, you know, sometimes we say certain things we don't mean or we spill a little tea that we're not supposed to spill. But deep down, I would never really do that to somebody that I cared about, depending on the, I mean, if it's a major situation, I would never do that. Like, if it's job jeopardizing, if it's 
spouse jeopardizing anything like that i'm taking it to my grave like there's certain conversations me and you me and jaleesa me and kayla me and willis we all had to where i would mm -mm, not repeating it and i'm also not about to sit up and talk about my friends with bitches that they don't like and, and not check shit because that's one thing that pisses me off when people play both sides <laughs> to stare when people play both sides like if if you're my best friend and you know somebody don't like me <laughs> why are you entertaining their conversation about me either check the shit or shut up check the shit or shut up that's that's just how I feel and then tell me about it so I could check them if you're not gonna say anything because I could defend myself but it just is what it is but shit like that is where I'm like, dang, I would never did you like that. So I do be holding a grudge slash resentment. Call it what you want, whatever. Sassy man apocalypse. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's just, Sassy man apocalypse. It is. Yeah, it's, because y'all want us to be so fucking in touch with our emotions, but now that we in touch with our emotions and shit, y'all ain't fucking with the fire. So I don't know what to say about that shit, but it, it, yeah. Everything doesn't deserve, a doesn't deserve a reaction, but for the most part, you are going to get a reaction out of me, and it's going to be the reaction you deserve. And sorry if you're a shitty person, but you just are. So that just is what it is. That's my take on the resentment. I guess I do be holding a grudge. <laughs> And I will say... You came to that conclusion? Yeah, I do be holding a grudge. It depends on certain situations. I, I, I mean, it's it's in human nature. I mean, it's no different from, like, different, you know, from animals. Like, if you do enough bad consistently, they will, they, they will forever remember that. It's no different from humans. If you do, if somebody does you bad consistently, then, yeah, you're going to fucking feel some type of way about that shit. And... Or if they just do one big ass thing to fuck you over, then yeah, they go, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna fucking make you feel some type of way. And although I will say apologies are needed, apologies don't always help certain situations. They just don't. Yeah. Yeah. Especially once you cross the major line. Apology I'll accept well no, I won't. I won't accept your apology. I'll just be like, okay, cool. I'll tell you if I accept your apology. <laughs> you know, we've been in multiple situations to where I didn't have to apologize or you had to apologize or something like that. You'll know if I really fuck with you after the apology and shit because I will still fuck with you. But if I'm distant and standoffish, no, that bridge is burnt. Mr. Torres himself. <laughs> that bridge is burnt. Yeah, I understand that. You know, I definitely do. So if y'all got some if y'all got some people out there that y'all got resentment towards and y'all need to either crush the bridge or build the bridge back, do what you gotta do. Sometimes shit ain't worth it. It could just be a simple conversation that y'all can have that might, you know, either rekindle or just solidify it. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, we really just don't need to be talking to each other like that. And if it's a if it's an apology towards me that's needed, catch me while I care. Because once I don't care, I don't care. Like if you wait two three months to finally own up to something you've done to piss me off by that point in time i don't give a damn anymore i say that for anybody friendships relationships bosses ships bosses ships. <laughs> ships. I, work relationship work relationship that water got you lit okay um <laughs> work relationships water. anything like that i just really feel like um Catch me while I care because once I don't care, you will feel it, and then I'm gonna be the bad guy, and I don't mind playing that character. So it just is what it is. Yeah. So if you're not ready for the kitchen or the heat, don't stay out it. of it. Stay the fuck out don't of it. Don't even walk in it. Just stay in the living room and yeah. take your shoes off like everybody else. Right. And make sure you don't stink. <laughs> Cause I'll let you know. But anyway, so <laughs> that wraps up another episode of Triple P and J. Thank y'all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate y'all joining us back week after week for all of our faithful listeners. But again, if you are new to the podcast, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment, sub subscribe, and comment. Okay. And then subscribe. The notification so then bell button. No, I already said that. No, you didn't. You said subscribe three times. 
But don't forget to subscribe. So if that way, if y'all haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe. So that way y'all get our um, content and everything. So just subscribe. All right. And with that being said, we'll see y'all on the next episode. Peace.